Hey guys, Ken Smith from Bigfoot Central here in Richmond, Texas. Still waiting for Bigfoot to reach out. I'd love to do a show with you. So this is going to be a, a two for three. For, so this first part is an update on uh, the rolling pegboard. I thought this is really cool and I'm finally getting it loaded and getting to use it the way I wanted to use it originally. So that's first part of the video. Part two of the video, and if you want to jump to part two, if you're not interested in the pegboard, part two, I just did a side-by-side -side comparison, which I was personally curious about, and I thought, heck, I'll share it with you guys, because that's usually some of my better videos, of the Lake Master, the Humminbird Lake Master card versus the Garmin Navionics card. Now, let me get this right. Garmin bought Navionics, or Navionics bought Garmin. I think Garmin bought Navionics, so they make a card specific for Garmin units. So I run down Rayburn, basically from a black forest about it, uh, about from the middle of the Black Forest, I run south to the Caney Flats. So this will give you a nice comparison of kind of that middle lake of what those two maps look like. And then at the last, I'm gonna come back and while I'm thinking about it, somebody sent me an email and asked, asked me to share, asked me to share with you guys uh, a tournament circuit upcoming in Arkansas. And for the life of me, I cannot find that email. So whoever did that, if you'll resend it, I'll share it. I get. A whole bunch of emails i get a whole bunch of comments i get instagram stuff and sometimes i just lose track and i'm old so i'm a little dawdled so anyway if you'll resend that i'll share that so we'll come back there right at the end we'll do our spark drawing and then i'm going to give you guys an update of what boats we've identified for the great 10 boat search and what boats we're still looking for so here we go hey guys ken smith ken smith fishing so i wanted to share with y'all something that we did actually quite a while ago but again, I hadn't been down here. If you remember, my buddies over at Die Ball, uh, the high school guys, made me a rolling pegboard. And then Chris over at Classic Fiberglass hooked me up with the second one. So you saw it in a video the other day, but I want to show you what it looks like and kind of how it functions now. But, now, by the way, before we do this, I want to apologize for my friend to my friend Dickie Newberry. So for years and years, I came to Rayburn and I stayed at Dickie's house. And I always remember going to Dickie's house and looking around in the garage and going, man, how can his garage be such a mess with all that tackle strewn around everywhere? Why doesn't he keep it organized? And Dickie, I'm sorry. Now that I've got a place down here, I completely understand there is crap everywhere out here. I would love, love, love to come down here and just spend two or three days cleaning and organizing. I just haven't had a chance to do it. I don't know with two in diapers when I'm gonna get a chance to do it, but I apologize to you because I understand now why your, why your garage always looked like it did. But this has helped a ton, if nothing else, for me to keep track of what I have and what I need. So the way we set this deal up is right here. So you see, we put them where we built them really, really tall. So by the way, so you can see the bass cat sets up really high on the trailer, right? So I wanted that to be really high as well. So I'm gonna guess, well, I tell you what, I know from playing sports in school that that's eight foot two inches. I can reach eight foot two inches high and that's probably a little higher than I can reach when we get over there. So let me show you how they've set it up. And then, I mean, it's really cool. So you see what I'm able to do is I just roll them right up to the boat, right? So this one's on rollers. And by the way, both of them have locks on them. So in addition to all the stuff I have on that wall, right? I got a bunch of junk on there. And then I got a bunch of junk up there. I wanted the stuff that I'm in and out of the boat regularly with, specifically crankbaits and, and some flipping baits, really, really close by and super handy. And so that's what we've done. I got these cool little baskets that go on it right there. I'm gonna, I got kind of make, I just kind of rigged some shelves down there at the bottom. <clears throat> but as I said, the caster's locked. So I wanna get it close to the boat. I don't have to worry about it rolling up and hitting the boat. And again, it's it's right at eight feet high, but you see we started the pegboards just right, basically level with the boat. And man, I absolutely love it. I've got all my big crankbaits kind of scattered across the top up there. I got my square bills on the back wall, 
got my frogs, some swim jigs. Uh, now this is, you know, I've got a bunch of stuff in the boat, but this is just kind of the stuff that I use a lot. A lot of cloud crankbaits. You know, I throw some uh, Strike King crankbaits. Uh, six Sense frogs. You know, Six Sense doesn't make, all their frogs are popping frogs. I got some Spro frogs. I got a, some other kind of frogs in there. Got some perch baits for the boys. Uh, I mean, I got a little bit of everything. You know, my favorite bait, you guys hear me talk about the prawn a lot. That's my favorite flipping bait. But, you know, kind of like I've always said to you guys, uh, I'm a tournament fisherman. And so uh, if they want a reaction innovation flipping baits over a prawn, I'm going to throw a reaction innovation flipping bait over a prawn. Uh, or if they want a six cents, or if they want a strike king over a six cents, that's what I'm going to throw. But, uh, you know, I, I throw what they're biting, and I throw a lot of six cent stuff. I throw a lot of Strike King stuff. Uh, all good stuff. So I just wanted to share that with y'all. I thought that was really cool. I really appreciate you guys. And, you know, down there at the bottom, they cut that out, and it looks really, really, really sharp. <clears throat> and then this one, you see I've kind of got stuff scattered up on it as well. I got that cool rack to hang my extra life jackets on for the boys. Got all my swim baits kind of on one side. Got a bunch of Yamamoto baits over here on this side. Uh, basically all trailers and then that D-shad. You guys know I love throwing that D-shad. My flukes, my great big flukes down there on the bottom. This is kind of my junk wall. All my big worms are over here. By the way, that's, uh, that's my 13-pounder right there in my right hand. That's me with the brown beard on the right. That's me and my buddy Billy Ray Johnson and Trent Faircloth back many, many years ago on Fork, back when you could see there was a bunch of big stumps on Fork. But there's a, I think there's a 915 in one hand and a 13 pounder in the other. But anyway, so big worms, uh, just a little bit of everything, drag baits, centipedes, uh, baby brush hogs. Man, I mean, I just, whatever I've collected over the years kind of gets stuck up there. A bunch of kind of different color old Senkos up there that I still throw a little bit. You know, I'm one of those guys that, that the last thing I want to have happen is get down here and somebody say, man, I'm catching them on this and that and that color and I not have one. So, uh, I got a little bit of everything out here and I got uh, a couple bait stores not very far away that I frequent as well. So, Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you guys. Uh, again, thanks to the guys over at Dive Ball for hooking me up with my uh, my rolling peg board and for my buddy Chris for hooking me up with the other one over there. So, all cool, guys. Hope y'all enjoyed that. And uh, I want to show you one more thing. So I told you I wanted to show you one more thing. I thought you might find this interesting. So, this unit is a hummingbird with a Lake Master map on it. This unit is the Garmin with the Garmin Navionics, the newest Garmin Navionics. So this is a Lake Master Plus, and what that means is the Plus shows you the satellite footage overlay. So you can see the lake is three feet low, or normally that would be the bank line. Now what I've done is, as I always do, I've come in here to Humminbird Charts, and I've set my water level offset three feet. So if I took it back to regular pool, you'd see the water line would go right up to the satellite image. But I want to get my charts, whoops, menu, menu. I want to get my charts correct, and the lake's about three feet low. But what I thought you guys might enjoy is just a straight comparison going down the lake of the nav chart, the Garmin nav chart, whoops, don't do that, Ken, versus the, uh, the Lake Master chart. So I'm gonna just run down the lake and show you the differences. after I trim the motor back down.
I've got them both on 500 feet now. You know, I'm gonna say they're pretty similar, just kind of looking. I think there's maybe a little bit more uh, detail for some of this section, but over here you get the road beds. You got a couple of house places on there that's not showing up on this one. Um, and I don't know. I mean, I think they're both good maps. Let's take them out a little bit further to a thousand feet. Uh, one of the things I do like about this one is it seems to name the creeks more often and I hardly ever know the name of anything on any lake, much less Rayburn. I've just never paid much attention because I always kind of call them what I know them as. But uh, yeah, I think there's some better, especially deep water detail maybe on the, on the Garmin map, at least in this particular section of the lake. Look out, Loon. Here we go. So we're a little further down the lake. This is the Caney Flats. And again, man, I, I would say pretty similar here, except again, over here, no road beds and no house foundations. And here we got some house foundations. We got some road beds. Look at there, the McGillberry Cemetery, historical. I didn't know that was out there. That's kind of interesting. Now I got to go side scan that. Never noticed that before. One thing I will say about, and I don't know that it makes much difference, but with this one, you can go from 500 feet to 200 feet. The other way, you can go jump to 1,000 feet. This one's a little bit more variable. You can go 500 to 800 to 0.2 miles, which would be 1,000. I don't know that makes any difference, but just something to note. All right, guys, hope y'all enjoyed that. So quick spark drawing, and I'm going to update you on the boats that I have found, and then the boats I'm still looking for for the Great 10 boat search. Now, I hope to start filming that next week. So we're probably two weeks from having 10 boat search material up, uh, just because we've got family in this weekend, but I've identified some here in North Texas and also some down around Rayburn. So we'll be getting a bunch of those up. And I want to look at possibly multiple models and multiple makers mainly because you guys are making them available to me and, and I'm interested. So we're going to look at a bunch of different boats in there. So spark drawing, we went right to the bottom of the barrel right there and we drew David Burton out of Wiley, Texas. So David, congratulations. Look for an envelope that just says rewards on it and that will have a $250 gift card from your friends over at Spark uh, Energy. All right, so right now, what the boats I've found so far is a Triton, which I know they don't make them anymore, but Tom's got one down at Rayburn. He's just down the road from me. And I think it's pretty similar to the Ranger. And it's also a 2016. So I'm kind of curious how it held up. Cause I mentioned to you guys, although I'm gonna look at newer boats, I'm interested in used boats too, which I think a lot of you guys are as well. So I may look at a new Ranger and a used Ranger or a newer Ranger and a seven or eight year old Ranger. So we're gonna look at Tom's Triton uh, I've identified uh, a G3. I've got a couple of those. I got multiple Rangers. A friend of mine in Oklahoma, I didn't know, ran one, so he's got one. Um, I have found, let me make sure I get this right. So uh, Derek Taylor won a Crestliner at the Classic this year. I think it was in a drawing. He doesn't have that boat. He hopes to get that boat into December, early January, but like everything else, there's production challenges and delivery challenges. So 
I would, if somebody's got a crest liner, I'd still love to get a hold of one before then, but if not, we won't. Um, talked to a guy with a Sea Arc, but he's in California, so I'm still looking for a Sea Arc. I have found multiple Rangers, so I think we're covered on Rangers. I think I already mentioned that. Got the tracker. Don't have a Lund. I had a guy reach out. He's got one in Fargo, but I looked, and that would only take me about two days to get up there. Uh, and then, so I'm a help from you guys. There's a guy here. There's a guy here locally in the Dallas area named David. I believe it's Gillum that I think has a Gator Tracks, but I can't find anybody that knows David. So David, if you happen upon this or somebody who knows David and knows that he still has a Gator Tracks would connect us. I appreciate that. So obviously I'm still looking for uh, that. And then I have found a, uh, a 2019 Vexus. Uh, again, down around Rayburn, so we've at least got one Vexus in the fight. So we're still looking for a bunch of boats, but right now I feel pretty confident we got plenty of Rangers, a couple of G3s. Uh, Ross has a brand new G3 we're going to go down and take a look at, uh, and Triton, but otherwise we're kind of still looking for everything else. And guys, I have heard you scream. Um, you know, when I did the great bass boat search, there were a couple of boats guys said, look at, look at, look at. Well, in the 10 boat, it's Avid, which I don't think I included in my original uh, review because I didn't know of them. But a lot of guys are really interested in the Avid boat, so I'd love to find an Avid as well. And I'd love to find that Havoc in a uh, bass boat style boat. So uh, any any of those, if you, if you have one, if you know somebody that has one, please let me know and uh, we'll track them down and get them on the calendar so we can look at them here in the next 60 days. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all your help in the great 10 boat search of 2022. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for participating in the spark. We've given away a ton of money this year, both through tournaments, over $40,000 in tournament winnings and a bunch of money. We're going to give away a bunch of money here at the end of the year for the $2,000 bounties on the 10 lakes. And then, money from just big bass and then also in the weekly drawing so uh that's been a great run for us with the folks at spark and uh we look forward to uh next year and seeing what we're going to be able to do with with you guys and with our sponsors and we just much appreciate you guys tuning in and helping me grow the channel and uh staying involved so again still looking for all those boats if you see something or hear of something that i can look at please let me know uh, otherwise i got more videos for y'all next week coming back to you from rayburn with some really cool live scope video you're gonna to wanna to tune in and watch next Tuesday. Thanks guys.